Hello Minions, Wheezy here. Uh, today I want to talk you through this uh, Call of Duty Blackout solo win that I got. Um, so, spoiler, I win this one. Um, but the important thing is I want to walk you kind of through what my thought process was here, because this wasn't with me playing a bunch of solo. This is one of, one of my very first matches, three or four. Um, so I'll just kind of walk you through it. Starting out with the warm-ups here, I always like to try and find a gun, because what I'm doing here isn't just screwing around. I want to make sure I get these hit markers. I'm, I'm kind of warming up my aiming, and I want to try and aim as much as I can for headshots, because that's going to be a good warm-up for what I'm trying to do during the game. Um, not that I'm going to be big into trying to aggressively kill, but but here I'm not just screwing around. I'm looking for a gun, and I'm trying to find moving targets and focus on getting those clean headshots and, uh, and pump firing the gun so that I can stay on target. So this is kind of a warm-up uh, before you deploy, not just uh, time to waste. So as I walk you through the rest of this, I'm going to try and kind of give you my thought process, but these, these all go back to things, if any of you are familiar with my older videos, and you can still search them on my channel, the Wheezy's War College series that I started. Um, I got a good start on it, but um, there's a lot of good stuff in here, and that applies to this, right? This is stuff that is that is applied for years, so. My strategy for dropping here was actually I was, the whole reason I was doing solos was to try and capture some footage for doing a tutorial, which I'll release soon, on how to glide. And uh, so I was just literally picking the furthest point away on the map that I could get to and kind of showing how this glide uh, strategy, technique, can get you basically across the entire map. So I was really just trying to go as far as I possibly could for the purposes of just arbitrarily showing you how far I could glide. Um, I will do a different video talking about actually intelligent ways <laughs> to pick where you want to land. Um, but as I was losing altitude and realized my shoot was about to deploy, I decided to pick the closest place that would have some weapons. And uh, Factory is actually one of my favorite places, um, as I found out since this, um, to land. Because it's it's got a lot of stuff, there's a lot of cover, a lot of places to hide, and it's not super popular. Um, so, the first thing that I'm doing here, and the first thing you really want to do when you land, is find these guns. And I get, I get, as it turns out, I mean, it's a time, but kind of, is definitely the case now. Finding this ABR so early on is, is, is like... Is like finding a gold gun, right? Like the ABR is is a laser beam in this game, and it deals so much damage because it's a three-round burst. And unlike the swordfish, even at distance, all three of those rounds are super close. I mean, you're not going to snipe with it. You almost can, <laughs> but um, the swordfish at 200 meters is useless. This thing is a laser beam at 150, 200 meters, pretty much. Um, you'll see a little bit later on where I take some shots at people, and I get some hits that I shouldn't get. Not really going to to do enough to really cause any damage, um, but it shows you the accuracy of the weapon. So, um, early game, I'm I'm just trying to loot, right? You you notice that I'm closing doors behind me and staying crouched and trying to be quiet. I don't want to draw a lot of attention. I don't want to be making a ton of noise because if there is someone nearby that I'm not aware of and I'm trying to listen to make sure that I know if there's anyone nearby, I don't want them to hear me just tromping around because knowing where people are is, is a huge advantage in this game. Um, and I would suggest that you play with headphones or your audio turned up as much as you possibly can because it's a very sound intensive game. It's all about knowing where people are um, and using every advantage you can. And it's about deliberate play. So you'll notice as this goes on, um, especially right now, you can actually see that I'm right on the edge of the circle, right? So it's very similar to my map movement um, video and, and my Weezy War College series where it talks about using the edges of the map, right? This applies in Blackout as well. This is all universal stuff that you can use. Um, so I'm trying to control my engagements by not letting people get behind me. If I was in the middle of this circle where you hear a lot of this gunfire off in the distance, then I would have to worry about 360 degrees of people. And if you're someone that's going for a ton of kills, Be advised. Further I, collapse expected. okay, right, that's what you're going to do. So. But if you're in Blackout, Presumably, you're not looking for a ton of kills. You're looking to win blackout. If you want a ton of kills and you want to be in the middle of action all the time, you should probably go play multiplayer. Multiplayer is awesome for that, and I love that too. If I want to go and get 50 kills, <laughs> I'm gonna go play multiplayer. I'm not gonna try and come to blackout and uh, and do that just because it's a completely different kind of kind of strategy. So, the biggest thing that I've seen, I've done it myself, and I still sometimes do it. And the times when I notice that I get myself killed the earliest is when I'm not patient enough, when I'm, um, even things like this, where I'm crossing from one to another, I make nervous, and I'm looking, I'm going cover to cover, but 
I'm looking for broken windows, signs that people are nearby, signs that people have been through here. I'm just trying to, to stay hyper aware of when danger might be nearby. It's a very deliberate game mode. Um, could be too slow paced for you. If you're someone that gets into Blackout and got really frustrated by it because you die too soon, it might be because it's just too slow paced for you. And, and that's okay. Um, or maybe slow paced is something that you could be good with because you'll see in this game, I forget exactly how many people I kill, but I spend most of the game not really killing anybody. But by the end, I do get probably more kills than the average person gets in a normal game. Because if you go out and get one or two kills right off the bat, great, that might set you up for a 5-6 kill game. Or you might draw so much attention that you just die right then. Whereas if you get to the end game, then you're down to the last few people, you control your engagements. I, I think you'll see in the long term. In addition to having a better chance at winning, and, and I think, you know, obviously that's kind of the point of the game, um, You'll, I, I think you'll see a lot more success by, by using this very deliberate playstyle. So I'm working the edge of the map. You can't really control where the circle's going to go. And by can't really, I mean can't at all. So sometimes you'll end up like this where the circle collapses big time from where I was. And so I'm forced to do things like cross this river uh, in order to move as opposed to going across the bridge. So I'm trying to minimize my exposure, right? Staying underwater as much as I can, getting up for a breath, and then going right back down. Because I don't know if someone's going to be watching me. And it's all about minimizing that exposure and then immediately when I'm here, seeing if anyone's around and then immediately getting to cover. Before I stop and try to figure out what's going on, I want to get to somewhere where I'm concealed or have cover. And now I'm looking around to see if there's people nearby. If someone saw me, they're either going to probably be moving on me or look into my direction. So if you run across the open and you're worried if people see you, check rooftops, check windows. Because if people did catch a glimpse of you moving, they're going to be watching for you, and you'll see me do that to other people later. Um, once you catch a glimpse of someone, you don't, like, duck and hide. You you peek over and you watch where they went, right? So if someone is going to spot you, then you can do a little quick little look around along key areas, windows and rooftops, where people will still have cover, and that's where they'll be looking for you from, and so you can look around and see if those people um, are there. Um, found this building unoccupied, um, again, using the, using the circle to kind of protect behind me, so I know people aren't coming from behind me. I think about going up this hill, because high ground is, is good, and uh, it gives you tactical advantage in gunfights, um, but I realize that the way that the circle is collapsing down on the cargo docks, that's really just not going to do me much good. I'm going to be on the hill, and I'm going to be coming downhill in the open um, for, for whatever engagement comes, so I decided to go left around the cargo docks, I don't have much choice. Um, and then I hear a, an ATV coming. I was smart in that when I heard it coming, I decided to take cover because I don't want them to necessarily see me. The ABR got me a little bit a little bit aggressive here. And I was like, oh, I can take these shots. See, the, the ABR is actually aggressive. These are bad shots, and he's on an ATV, which is hard to target. But those are laser beam shots, right? Like, if I'd have been on target, those would have done some damage to him. At that distance, I probably wouldn't have killed him, and all I really did was draw attention to myself there. So that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that, but I figured, hey, I'll take a few shots. Um, now, I probably wouldn't do that again. Um, and as we'll see, when I come across here, I actually did draw attention, and there's still have another guy up there watching me. Uh, luckily, that ABR, again, laser beamed right to the face, man. So um, I used a trauma kit. Um, that's something I mentioned as well. You may have noticed when I found the trauma kit at the beginning. I used it immediately. In solos, I do that. I Actually, I do that all the time now. If I find a trauma kit, all I want is my my next gunfight, right? Um, to be the most successful it can be. I don't want to wait until I'm at half health to try and use a trauma kit to get the most health I can out of it. I want my next fight to start with me with max armor and max health as much as possible. So, that, which is kind of a bigger strategy for, for how I have found myself being more successful in solo blackout, is don't try to win the game. And what I mean by that is, obviously, you're, you're trying to win the game, but if you come into the game thinking, I need to win, I need to win, I need to beat 100 people, or 99 people, right, because you want to be the 100th. Um, I went through there and, and redid, redid my health and armor. What you want to do is, is you want to win the next engagement, right? All you, you don't want to focus on winning the game. All you want to do is set yourself up for the next engagement. You want to control who you're going to fight next. Because all you can do is fight one fight at a time. If, if you're thinking five fights down the road, you're, you're, you're not going to be focused on what's going on. So the best success you'll have isn't to try and win the game, but to try to win the next engagement. So here I'm seeing guys, if I was trying to win the game, and I see a guy like this, it's like, I need to kill him, right? I need to kill this guy. If I'm going to win, I need to kill this guy. Um, and here's another mistake I made, because he's out there. I know I can't really kill him from here without a sniper rifle. 
So I think I can put some damage on him, but I'm not going to kill him. So I shouldn't even take those shots. Now I've revealed my position again, although I got, thought better of it this time, took one shot. This guy, again, thought better of it. I'm not going to do much to him. I see him. Now I know where two guys are. All right, there's, what is that side? I can't really tell in the preview window as much. Ten guys left, there's that 18. Might be 18. Um, again, I could have taken a shot there. The idea isn't for me to draw a lot of attention to where I am. It's to find out where everybody else is. So that when it comes time to fight, I've got the advantage in the engagement. So I'm watching this guy, and I'm thinking he might be a target if he holds still. So he gets in the back of his truck, and he's kind of put himself in a position where he does, he's kind of out in the open. So I decide that I'm going to engage this guy, especially to hold still. I put some shots on him. Now he knows where I am, right? So I'm looking for another shot. I don't have a good angle from this window. Decide to go downstairs. So when he looks back at that window where I shot him from, I'm not there anymore. So he's looking up there, and now I'm getting hits on him from down here. And so now he's saying, oh, he's over there. So now I'm relocating here, and boom. And he decides to peek back out. He shouldn't have peeked back out there. If he was beat, he should have gone out the other side and tried to escape. So I win that because the ABR is a laser beam. <laughs> um, that was pro that's, a, that's a range that was probably undoable for any other assault rifle in the game. This is an assault rifle, I guess they call it, whatever, battle rifle or precision rifle. But um, I take fire here. Again, I've got a cross. The circle's closing in behind me. I don't know where these shots came from. I knew they came from my left. I searched this area. I don't find this guy. So he was smart. He shot at me. He didn't kill me. Right? He, he did the same thing, right? He probably doesn't... He doesn't have an ABR, obviously. I could hear it, right? He's got, like, an ICR or something like that. I was at a range. He wasn't really going to kill me. He had a chance. He could have. I mean, I guess it was worth a shot. But he figured out, oh, I didn't kill him, and now he knows roughly where I am, so I need to get out of here. So whoever this guy is, he booked. Because I was still, like, listening for footsteps, trying to find him. Turns out there's nobody around here. And it takes me an inordinate amount of time to figure that out. <laughs> um, I even put on... I put on Skulker here so that I can move around faster without making sound, because I don't want him to hear me moving around searching for him. But I want to find out where he is. And so I'm still working the edges, I'm trying, I'm, I know that there's nobody off to my side here because I came from that direction and that's where the storm is. So I'm trying to work the edge and see if I can close in on where he might be in a way that's not gonna put me at a disadvantage in this engagement. So here's kind of the danger zone where I don't know where he could be. And I kind of realize, okay, he's gone, so he's left. And again, in the background, while I'm slow playing this and controlling my next engagement, people are off killing each other and doing things, being in the middle of the circle, doing whatever. And I got two kills, nothing nothing special, nothing uh, nothing fantastic that I've done here, just working the edge and taking advantage of situations when they come up. So now I've got a break, I know this guy's not around me, I'm pretty safe. So I consolidate my first aid there, because they stack five, and I had like three and two, so I dropped it so I could stack them up for my inventory. Redid my trauma kit, redid my armor, so now I'm ready for the next engagement, right? I'm not worried about beating the last five people, I'm worried about my next engagement, and I am at 200 health, I've got my first aid equipped, and I've got my armor maxed out. And now I'm ready for the next engagement, and look, it comes without me even knowing. Somebody shoots at me, doesn't even manage to hit me, and now I'm getting pushed by the circle, but I don't even know where this guy's in, guy is. So I'm still just doing what I can to work the edge. So I'm working the edge here with my ABR laser beam. Um, so we get down to the end here. Um, you know, it's not really much of a spoiler, right? There's five people left, and the circle's closing in. I'm moving cover to cover. Right? Just working the edge. The storm's right on, my, right on my ass, so I'm relatively certain people aren't behind me. And I'm using cover. I'm not out in the open. I don't even know where people are, so I'm looking for places where I expect them to be, anticipating them. Go back to the War College videos, not to pump my old videos, but go watch, I did a pretty good job on those videos six years ago, whatever, <laughs> three years ago. Um, anticipate where people are going to be, use cover, work the edge of the map, right? There's a guy on this roof out here, which, as I move to cover, I think is the next engagement I have. I'm looking around, and I see him moving, he's like scooting across. I think he might even actually see me expected. here, and maybe he's just lying and shopping out and see him. Zone. I got my ABR laser beam, and so as soon as he stops moving, I get to knock him out. There's, there's nothing fancy about that. I used cover, I was careful. He was basically, he's out in the open, he's prone up on top of buildings, so he's got high ground. But, but he was vulnerable, right? So I get that one. Throw the frag here, because I don't know where this guy's going. I'm still using cover, but I'm still trying to identify where people are, right? I decided to throw my trophy system out here because I'm like, oh, I just threw a grenade. He might throw one back. Probably should have saved that a little bit for the end, but, you know, better be cautious and be alive. That 
See what I don't do? I don't peek back out to where that guy is and immediately re-engage. I heal up first, and now I'm using cover. See how I moved back so I've got extra cover and a different angle? And I'm trying to just peek and see if he's still there. He's, again, smart players, the ones that get to the end of the smart players. He got hits on me, he didn't kill me, so he's relocating. So now I'm getting pushed by the storm still, and I just gotta move cover to cover. I get behind this cover, and I peek back, and I just happen to notice that he's trying to peek out. Stairway's in his way, I get that kill. Because I have cover, he can't really get a shot on me. And all of a sudden, it's one-on-one, -on -one, right? There's two guys left, and the circle's closing in. I have no idea where this guy is. So it's down to basics. And all I want to do is win the next engagement. I think you'll see me here. You're right, I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, well, I don't see him. I think I noticed my armor's low, and I think I patch up my armor here. If I remember correctly. I think I did. Come on, don't let me down. Oh, it's when I get to the truck. He's got a sensor up, so I destroy that. Luckily, I saw that. I'm still not, I don't know where he is. I know I'm safe inside the circle now. That's when I decide to patch up my armor. Because I know he's not to my left. I'm behind cover. I don't know where he is. I don't hear him moving. So now I'm max, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have my trauma kit, but I'm ready for my next engagement. So I'm looking to try and find out where he is. See him, take cover, try and re-engage, but he's gone. So I'm moving now too, because he, he knows where I was, so I need to be somewhere different too. I don't know where he's gone. And he's just decided that his tactic is high ground and grenades. And my tactic is laser beam and the out of face. So that win, there was absolutely, I don't want to say there's absolutely no skill in that, but for the most part, that was, that was fundamentals, right? I, that wasn't fantastic gun skill. I didn't outplay someone or do some fancy drop shot, right? And in that last engagement, he had multiple grenades and the high ground, right? But I used cover, I used tactics, and I got good shots, right? And I stayed calm because I was just trying to win my next engagement, not the whole game. So I managed to ramble all the way through 17 minutes of a 24-minute game. Um, like I said, there wasn't much slow to cut out, so it's a faster game than I expected. And uh, so what did I get? Five kills? If you go gung-ho early on, you get one or two. Wait to the end, I got, I got basically all of mine there at the end. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll do more like this, and uh, let me know what you think. Check me out at uh, my website, guys, if you don't know, wheezysgaming.com. Uh, see you guys later.